now we're moving on to Justice League number one, the very first issue of the new DC Universe. So this book, uh, spoilers, sprinkle the spoilers in underneath, spoilers galore. Uh, there's been some preview pages online uh, where Batman and Green Lantern run into each other. Now, we already know that in this world, in this timeline, because this is five years ago. That's right. This changes everything now to five years ago. Uh, and this, uh, in this world five years ago, superheroes are not the norm. Uh, the Gotham City Police are chasing Batman and a perp. Uh, they actually ask if they're both one of those. Right. So that could mean they don't know. Heroes are not welcome in this world. Not yet, anyway. Right. Uh, and Batman's running from the law, but also chasing a perp. Uh, and uh, to set up uh, the new universe, I think they've done a good thing. That You see... Off the top, you see Batman and Green Lantern. That's right. The two probably most recognizable characters in the DC Universe right now because of the movies. Most recently in the movies, Batman and Green Lantern. Right. Uh, then including Cyborg, who's not yet Cyborg. It's all Cyborg origin story, which is great for people who don't know who Cyborg is. That's right. And I was a little worried about how they were going to treat Cyborg because right. I'm a big fan of him being a part of the Teen Titans. And it kind of makes sense that maybe this is how he becomes Cyborg with the creation of the Justice League. Mm -hmm. And then to end it all with Superman showing up, the most recognizable character in DC. Right. Now, Superman shows up, and I had said, it's not like in the universe of a week ago, uh, Superman had gray temples, but this Superman is clearly younger. Clearly younger, and clearly, even the, though he only really appears in a couple panels, not the Superman that we know. No, uh, we've already set up, even Green Lantern says at one point that uh, Superman's an alien, can we trust him? It's that vibe of, can we trust aliens? Right. So here's a Superman that is now Superman, out and about, out as an alien, in a world that doesn't trust aliens, and Green Lantern's looking for him, and the very first time Superman meets Green Lantern gets punched. Punched in the face. Yeah. He gets knocked out right across the, the uh, so alley. So automatically you can see that uh, if your Superman would rather talk first and then throw a punch, um, maybe this isn't the same Superman. This is a different Superman altogether. Uh, and then of course the final panel uh, is a one huge page shot of Superman uh, asking Batman what, what can you do? And he's not wearing the red underpants. He's not wearing the red underpants. Which I know is a huge deal for you. For me, um, I grew up with the Christopher Reeve movies. Um, and I know that there's been a lot of talk about making Superman accessible to new uh, readers. And that was the term accessible uh, strikes fear in my heart <laughs> when it comes to some, some uh, a character like Superman. Uh, for me, again, full disclosure where I'm coming from, for me, Superman... Uh, represents truth, justice, and the American way. It always has for me. It, uh, you know, it always will. Uh, so when they start to make him more accessible, I was like, well, what are they going to do with him? Um, it seems like he's more edgy. Mm -hmm. um, he's uh, a little bit of a loner because he has been operating, but not amongst the heroes, and as we're as we're seeing it, and he seems to not shoot first and ask questions later, but punch first and ask questions later, and. Uh, it's too early to tell. I'm not sure how I feel about that new Superman. Um, but I always felt that Superman should be the role model for all the other superheroes. Right. Uh, now, uh, the perpetrator that Batman is chasing. Right. Uh, when I first read the preview pages, if you don't already know, uh, spoilers again, uh, when I first read the preview pages, I caught a good, you know, good look at one of those panels and really thought somebody was like, oh, it's Killer Croc wearing goggles. Right. But it's not. And I pointed out to a friend of mine that I thought it was a parademon which is all part of Kirby's fourth world with the new gods and dark side and you know right. Orion and Mr. Miracle who are some of my favorite characters in the DC universe who we haven't seen since Final Crisis right and I love Kirby's new gods oh it's so they're so great then you see one of these things with a little box that goes ping that made my heart go ping <laughs> I was very excited then one of the parademons yells for Darkseid right before it explodes. Right. Uh, beautiful. Setting up Darkseid as the big bad is beautiful. It's perfect. Now, I do, of course, love that uh, Hal says Darkseid is that a band. Is that, there's some great dialogue. Oh, a really good dialogue. Series. 
And I think uh, that's where the book shines the most for me, is the banter between Hal and Bruce. I still think uh, Bruce talks a little too much. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I kind of like my Batman brooding, quiet, you know, reserved, thinking ahead because he needs to. Uh, Hal can talk, run his mouth all he wants. Oh, yeah. But I think I, I found that they bantered just maybe a little too much for my life. What I did like was Hal showing up and saying, well, Batman, you're real. And Batman just going, yeah, Green Lantern, turn your lights off, keep it down, yeah. let's stay in the dark. Batman knows exactly who Green Lantern is, right. says he's done research on Superman. He is the detective, and he's very much a detective in this issue. I think my favorite moment in Justice League number one is when Green Lantern puts it together that Batman is just a man dressed as a bat. Yeah. For me, I, I laugh. So. It's pretty great. Uh, so overall, Justice League, great. I love the uh, origin story for Vic. Yep. Sets up a lot that his dad... Starting is, off slow but nice. Starting off slow yeah. but nice, setting up that his dad is researching superheroes, yeah. that he's too busy to do that, to care about what Vic is doing. So for you, the good. For me, the good was uh, the setup, the fact that Darkseid's the big bad, yeah. that I think that was the setup at the end of Flashpoint, where it's to gather the team to prevent them, or the, the timelines were split long ago to weaken you for their arrival. I think it's the arrival of Darkseid and the New Gods. Right. Now, I want to make it clear, the New Gods aren't necessarily all bad. There's Orion and Miracle and Barda and all the good guys. But in general, the New Gods showing up from another dimension yeah. through the boom tubes, like that's going to... You know, soften up the earth to get ready for this. So I think if this is the uh, the impending doom, the their arrival that Flashpoint was talking about, I'm in heaven that it's the new <laughs> gods. Okay, and the bad? Uh, the bad for me, uh, it's primarily a book that focuses on Batman and Green Lantern. Right. Not a problem for me. Not a problem for you. Huge problem for me because there's more than just those two guys in the Justice League. And I understand that we're building, and I understand that, but it would have been nice to see hints of what the other guys are up to. Right. So for me, uh, the good was the banter between Hal and Bruce. The art, of course, Jim Lee knocks it out of the park. Uh, the bad for me, uh, the jury is still out on Superman. It didn't seem like my, the Superman that I know and love. Right. Um, the costume, again, full disclosure, I, I like the classic costume. I don't know why he has to wear armor. Um, but I'm willing to give it a shot. It will be explained. There's actually in the back of Justice League, there's little art panels, and it says yeah. the armor will be explained in Action Comics. I, I am waiting. And who's, who's writing Action Comics? Graham Morrison. So you're in who, heaven. Who I trust uh, implicitly. Great. So. Well, so we, we both really enjoyed both of the, uh, the Flashpoint ending and the new beginning for the Justice League. Right. Um, we've got lots more issues to review. This could kill us. This might just destroy us. Yeah. But uh, before we go on, uh, a feature on this show that I'm very excited about. He's very excited about it. I could take it or leave it. Uh, my most favorite superhero ever is Red Tornado. And I look forward to seeing where he will show up in the new 52. He hasn't been announced as showing up anywhere yet, but... I have confidence that he will show up. I even talked to uh, Dan Didio this weekend at Fan Expo about it, and I'm hoping, as he is, that he shows up somewhere. But when the editor tells you he's hoping he shows up, it doesn't bode well. But anyway, we'll do our very first edition of... Uh, Red Tornado Watch. Red Tornado Watch, right now. There is no Red Tornado in this week's comics. And that was the Red Tornado Watch. That was Red Tornado Watch. I'm very excited that that's a segment on our show. Yeah. So that's it for today. That's all. That's all for this week because there's only two comics to review this week from DC. I'm sure there are others from another company, but... We won't read those. I don't know what those are. 